Welcome to the Dad Ventures podcast, sponsored by Connex, encouraging kids of all ages to think outside the blocks. Now, more and more dads want to be involved in their children's development, but sometimes it can be hard to find guidance and support. As a hands-on dad myself, I want to help create an aspirational image of fatherhood that we can all strive for through our variety of guests and their journey through parenthood. So let's talk, let's laugh, and let's share the things we find difficult and become the type of dads we really want to be. Welcome to another episode of the Dad Avengers podcast. Uh, my guest today is part of a very well-known boy band called JLS, but since then has taken a bit of a, a career change, upending his life in London to go and live in the countryside, working in the farming industry. He's also a presenter of CBB's Down on the Farm and a father of two it is, of course, JB Gill! Hey, how you doing, Nigel? Dude, I'm all good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Can't complain. Can't complain. You're a busy man right now, even during lockdown. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's literally not stopped, to be honest. It's been good, actually, to spend time with the family. Um, as I'm sure you you can understand, it's hard sometimes in our line of work. Um, and you're always traveling, you're always doing something or the other. And uh, as your kids get older as well, you know, their schedules become busier than even than yours tell me about <laughs> so, uh, it yeah it's been, it was nice kind of spending the time with the family my daughter she's two Kiara um she just she didn't really know anything different if that makes sense yeah totally she had the best time um during lockdown and and it was good for me as I say just to spend time with the kids because I believe that those first two three years uh, are priceless man you can't get them back and as much time as you can spend with the kids um, yeah, I mean, as I say, it's priceless. You said there that those those first three years are important to you. It 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 shows fully that you're a hands on dad, which is what Dad Ventures is is all about. I, I just think that those years are what I call the formative years. It's a stage where they're learning something pretty much every single day, yeah, if not multiple things a day. Yeah, and they're coming up with new language. You know, they're developing their skills in sharing, and you know, all sorts of different bits and pieces. And for Kara, obviously, she's the youngest, so she's picking up even more from her older brother, um, as well as from uh, from Chloe and I. So for me being there to be part of that process is really really important and as much as you can you know of course you know for for some dads they they want to do that but they can't because of work or whatever else other commitments yeah. you know just being able to take those moments dropping the kids to school coming back do bath time or read the story before bed you know things like that for me are really really special and as i say you know they don't last forever exactly dude you say about um them not lasting forever mine are getting older mine are like 11 and 12 now so i don't pick up my son hardly as much because he's, he's like he's, nearly, he's getting on for my height but I still like to like be able to like pick him up and hold him you yeah. the way you do with yours now yeah that slowly gets less and less and and yeah don't don't even get me started <laughs> we don't want any tears how does that how are you feeling about that um it's like they're not your little babies anymore mm -hmm. it's something you don't want to happen but you also want to happen because you know they get their independence and they become their own people and they be, you know mm -hmm. they become the people that they are destined to be as it were yeah. but yeah i can't i can't lie it's 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 one of those things that you slowly see going away that you don't want to go yeah. away you grew up in antigua right yeah so i spent those years till i was probably about four i think or five um in antigua yeah i always remember spending time with the family do you know what i mean it, Although, of course, my parents, you know, both had to work and, you know, we're both out of the house, especially as we got older and stuff like that. Um, you know, my mum was a nurse as well. So she's, you know, like working long hours. And yeah. it wasn't until we were slightly older where she kind of her hours regulated and there's more sort of nine to five type work. But um, and same with my dad, you know, my dad was uh, as a carpenter by trade. Um, so, you know, he was always working in properties yeah. and stuff like that. So, again, it, it was kind of like work, normal working hours. Um but yeah, you know, I've always got great memories, especially in the holidays and stuff like that. Um, spending time with the family, you know, we did stuff together. We'd go to day trips wherever, here and there. So um, that's definitely something that I've wanted to retain for my family. As I say, I just feel it's really important as a dad to be part of that process. Do you know what I mean? It's not yeah. just the sort of hunter-gatherer. Um, but at the same time, I think we do cross over and we have to cross over. We have to be relatively versatile just because of our lifestyle and how things are. Um, yeah. And as I say, I quite enjoy mixing the roles sometimes. So was your dad as hands-on as you are? Uh, no, I wouldn't say he was as far as I am. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, there are definitely moments, you know, I, I remember distinctly him taking me to school and stuff like that. So there was definitely, you know, moments like that where he would, as I say, where he would be looking after, you know, my brother and I, you know, often in the holidays, which you probably didn't like uh, for most, for the most part, having to go to work with him, as I say, when he's working on a property or doing something, um, Work-wise, we'd have to go with him. Both my parents, actually, yeah. both of them had their own businesses to an extent. And so we were, the whole family is involved in that, Yeah, you know. And and as I say, that's kind of an ethos that oh my, well, we have, of course, with the farm now. Um, it's kind of all hands on deck. And although the kids are a bit young to kind of be involved too deeply, it's a lot of obviously physical work. Um, but yeah, I mean, when we do stuff with the turkeys, you know, when the turkeys come on site uh, in the summer, you know, Ace is out there running around, yeah. getting them out, talking to the farmer, you know, so... <laughs> All of those sorts of things, we kind of just make part of the fabric of the family, you know? And that was definitely something that I experienced yeah. as, a, as a youngster. Did I read somewhere that um, your dad introduced you to horses? Yeah, so my dad's um, an avid uh, horse fan. Um, yeah, he's all, he, I mean, as long as I've known, he's loved horses, um, kept horses. Uh, we we don't have horses in this country, but if he had his way, then he'd have a whole stable full of them. <laughs> um, and he, yeah, it's something that he's always encouraged. So growing up with, with animals around, uh, you had horses, you're in uh, a hot country. Do you think that gave you a passion for nature and that's what's driven you back to it after, let's say, living the city life and doing the entertainment thing? I do think there is an element of that because it's something that, was part of my early years. The The biggest thing has kind of been appreciating yeah. the countryside and the stillness of life. And I, I've always had that element to me as an individual. Do you know what I mean? I enjoy yeah. peace. I enjoy silence. I don't have any problem sitting and reading a book or, do you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm quite happy to work hard. Um, you know, and of course, as part of JLS, I think when I did have time off, like the premise that I always had for myself was, I want to be in a place where I can just chill I can go outside. I don't have to hear sirens and horns and all the other stuff that comes with <laughs> working in the city and being busy all the time. And, it, you know, the fast pace of it all and just be able to recharge, unwind and chill. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I definitely wanted to be somewhere where it was just a bit yeah. slower, slower pace, I guess. You've taken that and you, you, you've created this this passionate sort of way of living. And now you're in, introducing your kids to that as well. Um, you're helping them see... Uh, maybe a future in in farming as a career is that is that part of it yeah absolutely for me i think it's about opening their eyes to as many opportunities as possible yeah. i believe that every um industry that we have whether it's entertainment politics law whatever it is every industry has to respect where we get our food from 100 percent, because it impacts us all as we've seen even through the pandemic you look at what's happened with covid and so on you know one of the key jobs one of those key worker roles has been within the food industry, whether it's the supermarkets, yeah. all the way to the farm. Do you know what I mean? And we've seen just how much we've, you know, when, when we didn't have eggs on the shelves, we didn't have flour on the shelves. It wasn't, you know, the, the supermarkets almost couldn't do anything. Yeah. So yeah. The, the respect was gained then for the farmers, for the people actually working and the people producing the food. And so for me, I want to try and cultivate that respect so that whether they go into law or whether they end up being a politician, whatever it is that they do, they have that respect for their food yeah, yeah, um, and that it's ethically sourced and produced. And we, we know as well just how much of an impact that has on our, our world you know, with climate change and all that sort of stuff. 100%. Do you see what I'm saying? The impact for me is greater than just a career option. Do you yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah, totally. You're teaching them something about the world rather than just, oh, this is, you're teaching them the, the way the world works, the, the circle of life, as it were. Yeah, absolutely. Working on a farm, mm -hmm. that's massively all about teamwork. I'm, I'm assuming you guys have to really like put in a lot of time, early mornings, all of that. How are the kids with all of that? The kids are good. I mean, Ace is brilliant, to be honest. Um, He's at the age now as well where he can come in and actually help. <laughs> yeah, didn't I see him picking apples the other day? Yeah, yeah. So he's literally been waiting for that all year. <laughs> like he's obviously, you know, he knows that we've got fruit trees and stuff. In fact, earlier in the year, we had a harvest of cherries, which is the first time really that I've noticed how many cherry trees we have here on the farm. So wait, hold on. Tell me, tell me quickly. What have you got on the farm? Sounds like you've got cherry trees, you've got apple trees. Pear what trees as well. Pear. We've got slows. Do you know what slow is? Yeah, so that's to make gin, right? Yeah, you can make gin out of it. I mean, you can make gin out of anything. But yeah. So, yeah. 
Um, so we've got those as well. Um, and then we have our pigs, we have our turkeys, we've got chickens and pigs, turkeys, chickens. They're your main animals, yeah. right? Yeah. So how do we deal with the difficult question of what food comes from what animal? So for me, I've always told them from day one. Right. I mean, Kiara's six months, I'm holding her in my arms and I'm cooking salmon for dinner. And I'm telling her, this is salmon. It comes from fish. Yeah, yeah. Always just made it part of, of what we do. And, you know, if as we as, as they get older, they, they decide they don't want to have me or they don't like anything about the process, that's fine. But on the other end of the scale, we have problems with foxes, you know, just as any poultry right. farm would. And so we have to manage that as well. Yeah. And I've been down on the farm and I thought to myself, let me just go and check the turkeys before I take Ace to school. And I've gone down there and we've literally had a massacre, 20 or 30 dead turkeys. The foxes either got in or some of the turkeys had have jumped out and been spooked and literally they're everywhere and you can't leave them lying about literally i've been like i don't know how i'm going to do this in five or ten minutes and ace is sat there in the passion sheet and he's just like daddy what's happened and you can't you, you can't shy away from it you can't be like oh nothing like you can see There's everything. 20 dead birds in in the in the coop as it we were. do have shelter, but they're all outdoor in. Okay. So they're always outdoor and that shelter isn't locked. So they can go in, they can go out. But as I say, we've been, I've been down there with Ace before and it's just everywhere. You can't shy away from it. And he's had to help me like find every single bird that's passed. And wait, hold on. Ace is six, five, six, six, six. Uh, how old was he when this happened? Four. Four. And took it in his stride, helping daddy to to get the birds that had been killed by the fox that got in or whatever happened. Yeah. We didn't quite know what happened, but how did he take that on? What normally I would have done was take him to school, come back, check the turkeys, make sure everything's all right, feed them, do all of that. But something in my spirit told me to go down that morning and I thought, oh, I shouldn't have done this because now, you can't, as I say, you can't leave it lying around because then that creates a, a bigger problem and what will happen is the fox comes yeah. back. So I didn't have any choice but to get out at that time. And he then gets angry. He's saying, oh, what happened, daddy? And I say, well, the fox got in or whatever happened. I don't know. But it's really interesting kind of, as you say, how they react. And, you know, I would never, never say to him, right, Ace, come here, go in that, pick that, do that, whatever. No, no. Not in a situation like that, especially as he's so young. But for him, he recognized the threat and he recognized the danger and he knew that I was under pressure effectively. And he wanted to help daddy at the end of the day. That's it. He wanted to be involved. So for him, it's one of those things where he, that he's witnessed. And so he has a very clear understanding of death. And although we haven't had anyone in the family that we've lost or has passed on, yeah. he understands that process and how it works. And that wasn't something that we intentionally did. It's just been part of the fabric of our lives. I believe that when we're born, everyone intrinsically knows exactly what death is. And as we get older, we start to forget exactly what it is. People don't talk about it because it's a taboo. Yeah, definitely. And, and it's funny because, of course, when, we, when I've done shows like Down on the Farm and, um, you know, we've talked about the process of farming and it's always been like a tricky subject. And I do agree because I think that certain children are able to deal with, fully deal with, I suppose, the concept of death. Yeah. Um, and that point is different for each child. So obviously for someone like Ace, Ace would be comfortable talking about that because that's been part of his life, right. you know, whereas other children perhaps who haven't had that experience, or haven't been part of that type of lifestyle might struggle with it, you know, and it's like anything, you know, yeah. any any topic you, you might want to talk about or you might want to discuss, everyone's different and they deal with it in certain different ways. And so I don't know if it's right to say as a show, as a TV show, we explain that process because it is it is a deep process you know it's a difficult yeah. discussion sometimes you know and, and i do think it's something that a parent should be able to relay but I, I suppose that's where the controversy comes in because life death sorry is as much a part of life as life is yeah. and as i say I, I think it's a necessary discussion to have and within reason the earlier that it can be discussed and openly discussed obviously at the child's pace the better yeah yeah no no i i totally get that i i, I think there are some taboo subjects that, that people avoid with children that I don't think they should avoid as much. Of course, like you say, it needs to be uh, when you feel the child exhibits that they're ready. Because, you know, they'll ask questions. It's not like you're going to force your way upon them. They yeah. will be inquisitive about things. It's just the child's normal way. Yeah. So my daughter's got a, a hamster. She got it um, a year ago and it's 
life expectancy is two years. So I've got, I know that I've got a moment coming for me. Yeah. But you've been through it and you've probably been through it more than, more times than most in such yeah. a short space of time doing what you do. So have you got any advice for someone like me in that situation? Um, we like to, I guess, adopt feral cats because, the, you know, they're cats that effectively people aren't really interested in. Yeah. And three of them that have been run over. And it's just, it's heartbreaking. And the first cat that we ever had here, um, I mean, he, when I say feral, like, I mean, literally, you could not touch him. But like, I was scared to give him food. <laughs> it was that bad. Yeah. I thought I was going to get scratched every single time. Phantom, we called him. Um, you know, he literally would just disappear. Like, you would he wasn't interested. But over time, like, when we had Ace, it was literally like he was Ace's dog. Like, I've got videos of him jumping up on Ace's little motorized car. And Ace would be like, come, Phantom, come. <laughs> and then uh, driving him around and all this sorts of stuff. And it was such a beautiful relationship. And... And unfortunately, um, we got a call from uh, one of the neighbours basically saying that um, they thought he'd been run over and they'd taken him to the vet and the vet had said, you know, that basically, you know, there's nothing they can really do and he's going to mm. die and so on and so forth. And when you build a relationship, you know, and, and those um, emotions that you would exhibit towards people and so on with the pet, it's similar, you know. So you're you're showing love, you're showing care, you're showing compassion, all of those sorts of things. And, you know, obviously I was really upset as well. Yeah. Ace recognized that something had happened and we couldn't hide it from him. Yeah. I mean, he must have been about two. So he was very, very young. And we, we were kind of, mm, should we talk about it? Do we need to tell him, blah, blah, blah? Will he be upset? All that sort of stuff. We didn't tell him for a couple of days. And then he started asking, where's Phantom? What's happened? Like literally uh, on and on and on. So we had to tell him. And the way that I deal with it, the way Chloe deals with it is very, very different. So he saw two different yeah. types of emotions as a result of what had happened. But I suppose the way that I deal with it in, in the sense that this is something that happens, Ace, and it's very, very sad, but it's okay. You know, Phantom be in heaven now and so on and so forth. And obviously we have faith as well. So for him, he understands those, you know, those, those terms and us saying that. Yeah. And then obviously he sees Chloe being upset, crying and so on. And then that, again, we saw another side come out to him where he was really compassionate towards Chloe and just saying, oh, mommy, it's okay. It'll be all right. Phantom's in heaven. Do you know what I mean? Like, so yeah. I just think, You've got to meet the child wherever they're at. Yeah. And depending on the age, again, you can have an in-depth discussion or not, as the case may be. Um, and just extend compassion. I think that is the most important thing when you're going through a period of grief. You know, each of us exhibit grief in, in different ways. Um, yeah. And just being understanding, I think, um, and and having an element of grace to say, yeah, it's all right for you to cry today if you feel sad. Do you know what I mean? Or come on, let's go and do blah, blah, blah today. Something that they really, really yeah. enjoy because you know that there's been a couple of days now that they've been really, really sad and they haven't seemed to shift it. And do you know what I mean? Like you can approach it in different ways. So I'd just say to people to be open-minded, to read your child or that person. Um, and yeah. Yeah, there's a lot can, that can be said for really paying attention, being there and listening, isn't it? It's, it's about listening to our kids. We had a, a grief come up as one of our topics on dad chats. We have these dad chats on Friday nights. And... It brought up a lot of, of things of, about listening to each other mm -hmm. and listening to your kids. And that circled round to mental health as well. So I, I think there's so much more that we can do in, in a listening way Absolutely. with our kids. And I think it, it's a very important thing that we need to do. So a farm, it must be such a great environment to um, grow up in. But what else are the kids into? What else do they like playing with? Ace is very much an outdoors person. So, you know, he's got the bikes and the scooters and stuff like that. And and Kiara's very musical. So what we've tried to do with her is, and, and what by musical, I mean as in very naturally, like music comes on, she's moving, she's dancing. Like she's picked <laughs> up Chloe's jeans from that. That's for sure. You know, it's funny that like we've got a little drum kit which was for Ace, but he hardly plays. And Kiara actually will go over there most days and be like, Daddy, drum time. And she'll sit down on there and she'll like play, you know, just yeah. smack about, do whatever. And then she'll be like, done. Um, and then Ace is old enough now where he can have toys. So he likes playing with a Spider-Man or a Batman or you know, that sort of thing. I mean, we're in such a privileged position that like these kids, even if we don't get it for them, grandparents have got it, got it for them. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Literally, they have everything. Connecting with your kids is at the heart of what Dadvengers is about, which is why we're so happy to have Connects as our sponsor. 
Connects and Kid Connects have projects for all the family and they are the perfect activity for kids and adults to connect naturally through play, imagination and creativity. Back in the day, like, you know, we weren't poor or anything like that, but do you know what I mean? It wasn't just like get whatever you want whenever you want it. So you had to kind of be resourceful and, you know, they weren't iPads and TVs and all this sorts of stuff. So, you know, you're in the car doing that two and a half hour journey, which seems like 10 days. You know, we were definitely practical with how we played, but um, yeah, yeah. my brother and I, we used to um, have uh, a snooker table. But yeah, we used to play that, find out all the rules, how to play pool, how to play snooker, do this, do that, who's the best. <laughs> um, and being two boys as well, we're very competitive. So but you bring up snooker table, right? My mum and dad, like, in the early years they used to like properly do the father christmas thing for me so i was like fully believing i fully believed till i was about eight nine <laughs> nine years old and i remember i asked for a snooker table and i was asking asking for months and months and on christmas morning i woke up and there was a snooker table that must have been about six or seven foot like tall in the box yeah. of course at the foot <laughs> of my bed I woke up and literally lost it there was a like there was a message from father christmas on the box yeah. and everything and yeah that was that was me. <laughs> yeah, I think now having sort of you know computers and phones and YouTube and all of that sort of stuff, you know, that's definitely something that's part of their play structure that I didn't have. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it's the kids these days. They you know they'll be less than a year old and they know how to like swipe a phone oh. and open it and and all of that. And <laughs> I got a new laptop. And they're like touching the screen. And I'm like, no, 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 it's not one. <laughs> it's, it's not, not one of those. <laughs> they automatically think, you know, it's the yeah. screen you touch and you swipe and you do all of that. Yeah. Did I hear right that Ace knew that um, Kiara was going to be a girl before you lot even had any inkling? Absolutely. We didn't know we were pregnant. And Ace was, I think we were in Primark or somewhere, um, getting, you know, bits and pieces for him, just sort of everyday bits or whatever. And he started picking up girl stuff. Right. And he was, and Chloe was like, oh, no, we don't need that. This is your section or whatever. We're getting, I don't know, socks or whatever it was she's trying to get. Um, and he just went, no, 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 this is for my sister. <laughs> and she's like, and Chloe was like, what are you talking what about? What sister is this, mate? Have a sister. <laughs> and then literally that month, obviously, we found out that Chloe was pregnant. And we didn't know what we were even having. So we never found, we didn't find out with Ace. We didn't find out with Kiara. We didn't know what we were having, right. of course, until she was then born. And of course, <laughs> she was a girl. Did you talk to him about it then or in the lead up to Kiara arriving? Did you, did you like try and glean anything from this like mastery that he had? Honestly, he what like was set he said no it's gonna be a girl wow and he was picking out girl when i say picking out girl stuff he's just like what about this we can get this for the baby like it was mad chloe didn't have the easiest time with ace's birth right yeah yeah so tell me tell me what happened and tell me as a father how was it for you going through a difficult time like that well she had a great pregnancy i'll just put that out there straight away which is i suppose one of the things that I don't know, it took us by surprise when obviously we got to the birth side of things. And she had a dream that, um, you know, she it was going to be a difficult birth. And, you know, I don't know if she knew the ins and outs of it, but she'd had quite a vivid dream about it wasn't going to be easy. It was going to be tough. It was, gonna, you know, there's going to be complications, stuff like that. And I think me being me, I'm, I'm very much a glass half full type kind of person. Um, so you were like, no, don't worry about it. Yeah, not not to dismiss it, but yeah. let's stay positive. Let's stay upbeat. We don't know what's going to have that sort of vibe. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We were overdue as well. So it kind of been, you know, quite probably 10 days, maybe more. 12 days past the due date. She goes into labor. So we go into the hospital to check it out. And one of the first things that we find is that every time she has a contraction, the heartbeat dips. Okay. Now, obviously the heartbeat was still going and stuff like that. So they were kind of had her monitored and immediately it was kind of just thrown us off, off, off course because she wanted to have a, a water birth or at least get in the water. Yeah. That was part of her birth plan. And having had such a great pregnancy, you know, it, it, we were kind of taken by surprise in that instance, you know, her having to go, you know, be hooked up straight up to the ECG and monitored and checking on the baby and all that sort of stuff. And kind of having the first step of the birth plan go out the window, yeah, we were yeah. just on edge. And she pretty much spent about 24 hours in labor and not really much had happened. Her waters hadn't broken, she hadn't had a yeah. show, none of that sort of stuff that is part of that process. Um, so 
at that stage, you do start to worry. You do start to think, well, what, you know, what's going on here? What's the situation? And I think for Chloe, maybe she would have felt it a bit more intuitively yeah. because it's happened to her body. But for me, again, as I say, I was very much trying to keep positive, trying to remain upbeat, obviously looking after her, making sure everything was all right, so on and so was forth. Was Chloe panicking at that point? No, she wasn't panicking, actually. Should um, we get her in? We're talking about her. If she's knocking around. Chloe? Oh, yeah, she's here. <laughs> I'm earwigging. She's earwigging. <laughs> Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm here chatting to your lovely man here about um, your firstborn and how it was a bit of a difficult time. And I was I was asking him what your state was. You were 24 hours in, Jamie just said. Yeah. And nothing was really happening. And he's trying to reassure you. What was going through both of your minds at this at this moment? I was frustrated because I couldn't get in the water. And I was like, I, I don't really like hospitals. I don't do injections. I don't do blood. This is when Chloe melts down. And this is when he really is great. <laughs> I'm fine with everything apart from get me in a hospital. And I'm like, horrendous. So I just, I was just like, right, just focus. I tried to think of the baby the whole time yeah. rather than myself. I just kept thinking it's going to be fine. Like, just be positive. Think about the baby. Just the pain's going to stop. Mm. So I didn't want to have any... Um, epidural or anything like that in my mind I was having a natural birth yeah. I know it sounds really weird but I think I just wanted to feel pain because then I could I could actually channel it and you know when they're telling me I need to push I can understand what I'm doing rather than not feeling yeah because you know your body as a dancer you know your body and you I know yeah. my body so well I knew something wasn't right so I was like <laughs> I'm in the best place I just need to know what I need to do just basically reassure me I, that's what I needed mm. I wasn't stressed I wanted to move about and I wanted to get into water and I couldn't mm. Um, and I was trying to hold it down. So effectively, yeah, he was trying to hold it down. <laughs> all the things that Chloe said she wanted, I was trying to enforce. He was like, no, 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 no. She's having this. He was very firm. Oh right. So you, you, when they were saying, okay, maybe you need an epidural now, blah blah. He's like, no, no, no. She doesn't want that. He's like, no, no, no. She don't want it. No, no. Yeah. She's not having it. She don't want that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I don't want. Go that, on, so. JP. Go <laughs> on, son. You know, these people are experts, and they are. You know, they've they've trained a very long time to be where they are at, but. For me, what Chloe wanted was the most yeah. important thing. And I, my job, I felt, was to communicate that and to make sure that that happened as, as much as it possibly could. I do think, remember, you get you getting a bit stressed at the point when it started to get a bit out of control in terms of yeah. they had to break my waters and because um, they wanted to get it moving, really, because the, the heart rate kept dipping. Yeah. And I remember him getting a bit stressed and I was like, well, right. that's not great because if he's getting stressed, then it's not great. It sounds like th by this point, you're like 30 hours in kind of thing. By this time, firstly, she's physically tired mm -hmm. as well as emotionally and mentally tired. I'm then frustrated because, you know, you've been asked questions like, well, does she want to do this? Does she want to do that? No, you know what the, the plan is. You know what the process is. Either. She doesn't want to do it. If you want to say that, Guys, we recommend doing this, that, and the other. No problem. And I was saying it like this. Oh, you got a real dad there. Oh, yeah. No, he's, he's cracking <laughs> That's it. a real daddy there. That's a proper dad vengeance daddy. That's like, oh, hey, this is what's happening now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you don't touch her. She's not having it. Yeah, he was really getting his... I just remember you getting all a bit agitated. Yeah, and I was just like, bro, calm point. down. Like, why are you getting stressed? I'm get. I'm here. <laughs> So then I remember my midwife coming in and she, she, I just felt like she was like, this is not looking yeah. great. She's trying to tell me something, but not trying to tell me. She didn't want to tell me to basically, yeah. we're going to go into theatre, I think. I remember having my waters broken. And I think at that point there was some kind of bleed. Yeah. Um, I don't really remember much more. I was on gas and air. And I remember them saying to me, oh, you, we need to go into theatre. He was putting scrubs on and it all like, then the lights, it's all going. That's when I freaked out. He freaked. And I was, I looked at him and they said, oh, you need to sign to me. And I was like, I'm not, she, Jay's like, she's not signing anything. And I was like, you can see <laughs> she's not in He's her right mind. <laughs> I was he like, is. she's he's not going to sign anything. So I was like, it's not good now. I, obviously, I don't like hospitals anyway. So yeah. the fact that we're going into theatre, I'm kind of not really with it, but with it. And I'm having all my contractions and everything. He's in scrubs. And I was like, oh, no, we're here. Like, this yeah. is not the plan. And I wasn't expecting cesarean at all. I'm like, you're going to cut my abs? Really? That I've worked hard for those years for? <laughs> Come on now, I've been working years on these. <laughs> so, um, and I just remember, obviously, it was all very, very, very felt very quick, very stressful. And then we were there. And then all of a sudden you heard the baby cry. Um, and then obviously that was just like a moment of, poor, what? No, because I remember just, I remember going there going, don't let my baby die. Like, that's how yeah. I felt because the heartbeat kept going and I was panicking at that. They said, the baby's fine. We're worried about you, Chloe. And I this think. this is the point. Before that point, that's where I, I think, you started panicked. to be worried because 
I knew it wasn't, there was something mm. wrong. And I knew that they were worrying, yeah. you know, it'd been long enough, Chloe was tired. And I, I then started to worry for, cause I'm then thinking, okay, well, it sounds bad to say this, but my concern was Chloe and yeah, I was yeah. then worried for her. And I, I was like, I'm going to lose my wife. Yeah, he was table. freaking out. That's and I went, oh, here yeah. we go. It makes 100% sense. Ace had his cord wrapped round. That's why he never came down. And the, I think the tear was um, the percentage. Pulling away the... because of the cord being pulled yeah, down. Yeah, and it was, I was absolutely fine. So um, he came out. And I remember at that point they said, I thought they said, do you want to see? I was like, no, no, no. I'm looking <laughs> straight up and I've got my eyes closed because I'm like, don't show me blood because I will faint and that's, that's all over. I think they said, do you want to hold the baby? And Jay thought I said no. And he was like, she needs to hold that baby now, skin to skin, skin to skin. He was, he was sticking up. All of a sudden, Sergeant Major, he was like, no, no. What's she needs to, he was like, Chloe, what do you mean you don't want to hold the baby? I was like, I said, I didn't want to hold the baby. I said, said Jay, they've got my stomach open on the table. Like, I'm this having, is after, yeah. It's a lot for me. And he's just like, she needs skin to skin now, now, now. I was just like, oh, here we well, go. Look, at least they've been paying attention at his antenatal classes. That's what we're going to say. <laughs> sure. At least the man had been paying attention because they'd said, look, skin to skin is great, blah, 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 X, Y, Z, and he'd been jotting this down and he's like, right, okay, cool. We need ski to skin to skin now, now. Come on, skin to skin. Like, okay. I, obviously, it's naivety at the time, you know, now in hindsight, it's naivety. And I didn't have a clue what I was doing, but, you know, those are the sorts of things that I worried about because I know, like, how natural it is for Chloe to be a mother. Like, that's something she's dreamt of all her life, do you know what I mean? And I, I didn't know how important it was at that point. So I just was, <laughs> was like, no, nah, we need to make you sure this happens. See, times. there's nothing wrong with you freaking out. There's nothing wrong with you freaking out. My mum's a midwife, so we had full access to my mum. She delivered both of my um, kids. Oh, wow. So Melina was, was going into labour, right? And we were still at home. Um, and we're, we're early stages, like the first couple contractions. And she starts to like panic off already, right? <laughs> she starts yeah. to go. And I turned to her and looked at her and went, we ain't there yet. <laughs> we ain't at that stage yet. That panic thing, that's a few hours later. And, that, and just hearing that, she breathed and she was like, okay. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the panic of like things you've heard, yeah. what you're expecting, all of that. And you kind of get swept up to, into it. Yeah. And it was like, no, 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 we're not, we're not, okay, we're not we're at that cool. bit yet. He says I'm cool, so I'm cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. totally. And having someone, no matter who it is, if it's a mother, if it's a friend, a sister, yeah. partner, husband, whatever, it's good to have a birthing partner of someone mm. that, you know, knows you and really helps you through that, that, that time because yeah. mm. it's crazy and it can it can be perfect it can be not people go through so many different experiences yeah 100 percent. so kiara was straightforward right kiara um they gave me the option of having a cesarean and i just said i i was really bad actually i was like i'm not making a decision i said if i go natural i go natural and then if i don't i'm gonna i wasn't i was like i'm not gonna go over and you know, be induced. Potentially and, be, and, yeah, yeah have an emergency. She didn't want to have an I emergency didn't want the cesarean. emergency again. Right, okay. Yeah. So I said, if I go naturally, perfect. If we get to a certain date, so I booked a cesarean because um, I was able to, because I'd already had one on a certain yeah. date, but I left it a bit, a bit after. So I gave myself, you know. The opportunity to maybe have a natural birth. Yeah, where we got to the date and then, you know, at nine o'clock in the morning, we checked in. I went in and um, had my cesarean. And she was um, like in my arms at like 10.30. Really skin to skin, skin to skin. Skin yeah. to skin. Didn't have to shout anyone for that one. not shout anyone. It was so weird. Everyone was a girl. We When we walked in, everyone, all, yeah. everyone was a girl. So we thought we were having a girl at that point. That's when we knew every single person was a woman. We literally walked in and went, all oh, right, we're having a girl today, clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Ace was right. And it was a completely different experience. Mm. I was up walking the next day after um, Kiara. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. Absolutely amazing. So, you got a good dad there, Chloe. You got a really, really good dad there. I mean, he's a proper dad venger. Oh, <laughs> I'm mean, glad you passed the test. Yeah, oh, he's more than passed the test. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to send him out and do courses. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're very on it like that though, especially like when yeah. like for medication as well. I had quite a lot of medication from the pain. And he's just like, ding, ding. <laughs> you know, she's not had medication. She's due like 20 minutes ago. Where are you? So make sure I'm eating. Make sure I'm hydrated. Like, you, you, you were great like that. All right. So there's a couple of things I want to uh, get out of you. And you can help with this, Chloe, uh, before we go. Dadvengers, you know what it's all about. We're all about supporting dads and, and modelling 
good fatherhood. So, JB, I've heard that you're into film. Yep. A man after my own heart. Can you think of great film dads or film dad moments? Um, Lion King. Oh, that's got some incredible dad moments. I've, I've got a lot of time for that choice. But why? For me, I think one of the biggest moments I find is when uh, Mufasa's with Simba. And Simba's obviously a kid. And he's just gone over to the... the um... He's been a naughty boy. He's gone down to the elephant graveyard. That's it, yeah. Oh, and he's been picked so up. That sort of, you know, so warded off all the... <laughs> warded off all the hyenas or whatever. And then he kind of says, you know, um, Nala, you go home. And I need to talk to Simba, you know, and they have that really intimate moment where you deliberately disobeyed me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and he obviously puts him straight into his place, but it's done out of a place of love. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not just discipline. It's not just being hard. It's it's almost like I have great expectations for you. So when you think it's just child's play, actually you have a responsibility and you have to embrace that responsibility even from this early age. And that's definitely something that yeah. I you know, Is this have... where you got all your tips from? Not even, but yeah, I guess so. No. Come on now. <laughs> A- any great dad knows a little bit about the line. <laughs> Come on now. Exactly. <laughs> can I say what? Yeah, of course you can. The Pursuit of Happiness. Oh, Will Smith. With his son as well, acting in it as well. But yeah. why for you? Why? I just think that film is just... Just when you've got Jaden walking around, just the whole the whole setup of the film. In that film, you see like he literally can't afford to put food in his mouth. No. And he's going without in order to make sure that of course he can develop his career to be able to look after the family, but ultimately to be able to care for his child that yeah. he's got sole custody of. Like yeah. for me, it's just like a masterclass in in yeah. self-sacrifice. Yeah, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Well done. I like those choices. How about you? What film do you think is or has one of your favourite dad moments? Okay. Um, for me, there is there's a film. It's in my top five films of all time ever. Interstellar. Oh, yes. Uh, with Matthew McConaughey. And they're living on Earth. Earth farming is is up the creek, right? We've only, we can only grow one crop left, right? And where we're dying. And we need to find a new planet to live on. And he volunteers to go and find that planet. But he volunteers to go and do it while his 13, 14 year old daughter is still here on the planet. And he might not come back for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, whatever. But there's a moment in that film where he promises his daughter that he will come back because I'm your dad. Of course I'm coming back. Oh. And he, go, he does everything yeah. he can to come back mm. for, for his daughter. Everything. I'm not going to spoil yeah. the end of the film or anything like that, but he does everything. And that, for me, that had just a yeah. beautiful dad moment Absolutely. in it. Absolutely. It wouldn't be a Dad Vengers, uh podcast or Dad Vengers chat if I didn't ask you what your dad superpower would be if you could have one. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, here we go. What's he going to come up with now? Well, I think being true to this day and age. Yeah. It would have to be char- being able to charge electronic things with my bare hands. So charging things up. Beesh, beesh. Yeah. What, like people or just like objects or like phones and like stuff? Could be anything. Like could you fuel me with food and stuff like that? Mm. Or like energy? Like I need energy. Could you like... Dzz. Yeah, maybe that's an extension to the power. <laughs> I never thought of that. So I'm going to add that in there. Oh, he's just getting one out. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe, have you got one? You can have one as well. Any power you want. A parent power, a dad vengers power. I'd love to just go through time. Yeah, like, and look at moments like, I don't know, when we first met or, for example, watching a moment of when Ace was born and actually watching it. I'd, I'd love to just see how we reacted, relive that moment, look at, at, a, at a, like a, a favourite memory and then just re-watch it. That's, that's a really nice thought. Well, listen, guys, Chloe, thank you for joining us. That's all right. I was listening. I was here again. (laughs) And JB, thanks for being open and and letting us know a little bit about your parenting journey. (laughs) It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having us. And thanks for letting me jump in. (laughs) No, anytime, anytime. Guys, thank you so much. I'll see you very, very soon. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Wow, JB, what a great guy and an absolute rock to Chloe, an incredible hands-on father, which is what we're all about here at Dadvengers. And he'd certainly done his homework, hadn't he? 
Thing is though, having to deal with the slaughter of turkeys in front of his kids cannot have been easy. But he had some great tips and advice about how to manage grief with your kids. And of course he's given some great hero dads to ponder and I'll certainly think about going to watch The Lion King. Who knows, I might stick that on tonight. Now if you want to know more about our Dadvengers community or if you have anything you'd like to share with us, you can do so at dadvengers.com or contact us through our Facebook or Instagram. Thanks for listening and we will see you again very soon. This has been the Dadvengers podcast sponsored by Connects, encouraging kids of all ages to think outside the blocks.